I'm going to tell you a story about a fish named Fred who lives in Cincinnati's Mill Creek. Fred really wants to get to the Ohio River, but he has many challenges to face along the way. Hello, Rachel here from Keep Cincinnati Beautiful. KCB is an organization that spreads the word of how beautiful and special our city is and how we can keep it that way. And I'm here to explain how you can be part of that and also how we can all work together to make Cincinnati a safe, healthy place to live for humans and animals. For this story, we're going to need you to turn on your imagination. Got it? Great, let's get started. So let's go back to Fred. This is Fred. Fred lives in the Mill Creek here in Cincinnati. The Mill Creek is a 28 mile long stream that passes through 34 different communities and at its end flows into the Ohio River. Fred lives up the Mill Creek in the forest where there are no people but lots of other neighbors. What kind of friends would Fred have in the forest? Hopefully you didn't say monkeys or alligators. In Ohio we have deer, raccoons, birds, frogs, turtles, and more. Fred likes the Mill Creek, but he's ready to move on, see the world, and make his way to the Ohio River. That's where the party's at. So, Fred begins his journey. It's as easy as swimming, right? Wrong. Before long, Fred is swimming when he notices that the creek has left the forest and is now running beside a farm. Fred pokes his head out of the water and sees Big open spaces with barns, tractors, farm animals, and the farmer out in the field taking care of all his food crops. What kind of food is the farmer growing? Well, there are lots of foods grown in Ohio, like corn, carrots, apples, and all sorts of other fruits and veggies. Corn is a popular crop in Ohio, so we'll say that's what Fred sees. But Fred also notices something else. As it begins to rain, the water is getting really dark and dirty. See, when the farmer cleared land to grow his crops, he had to cut down a lot of trees, which we have to do sometimes, and it's okay because we need food to eat. But when you cut down too many trees, it can cause something called erosion. That's when the soil gets washed away by the rain. All those trees the farmer cut down had big, powerful roots that act like anchors, holding the soil in place. But without the trees and their roots, all the soil was washed into the Mill Creek with the rain. Now, I need your help. Whenever something bad happens to Fred, we're going to say, Oh no, poor Fred! Try it with me. Oh no, poor Fred! Because of the erosion, now Fred can't see. He swims as fast as he can down the creek, but the water is so dirty now. So Fred just keeps going, knowing that the water only flows in one direction and that he will make it to the Ohio River soon. After a while, Fred comes alongside a golf course and pokes his head out of the water. What do you think he sees? Well, he probably sees wide open grassy areas golf carts, golfers, and beautiful flowers and plants. If you have a yard or garden at home, your family might put down something called fertilizer. Fertilizer is plant food. It helps grass and fruits and veggies grow big and strong. Now, golf courses use a lot of fertilizer to keep the golf course nice and green. When Fred peeks out of the Mill Creek, it's still raining. That morning, the landscaper at the golf course put a lot of fertilizer on the grass and flowers. All plants have roots and use those roots to soak up water and nutrients to survive, just like when you drink a milkshake through a straw. When it began to rain, the fertilizer hadn't had time to soak into the soil, so instead it is washing into the Mill Creek. Say it with me now. Oh no, poor Fred! 
It's not good when things like fertilizer get in our streams and rivers. It makes things like algae grow out of control, which makes the water unhealthy for animals and humans. Fred is not a plant. He shouldn't be swimming in or eating plant food. That would be like your mom serving you dog food for dinner. You could eat it, but you definitely don't want to. Now, Fred is a little sad. His creek is getting all gunked up, but he still has a long journey ahead. He can't get discouraged now. He puts his head back into the water and swims on. It's still raining. The wind is picking up. Fred continues to peek out of the water and explore the communities he is passing through. And now he's come upon a park. Maybe a park you often play at. Can you picture it? Maybe you see swings, slides, monkey bars, kids playing, and families eating picnics. The day before Fred's journey, a family had a picnic in the park. They looked around afterwards and didn't see a trash can, so they chose to leave their trash on the table. And what do we call that? That's right, littering. Now, I don't have to tell you that littering is wrong. We all know that litter is ugly and smelly and can hurt animals that share our neighborhoods. And that's what happens to Fred. He watches as a big gust of wind blows the litter from the playground and into the mill creek. Oh no, poor Fred! Fred knows how dangerous litter can be. He dodges left and he dodges right and manages to avoid all the litter. He hopes his friends downstream aren't harmed like his cousin Ned was years ago. Fred is getting tired. This adventure was more dangerous than he expected. He hopes he will reach the Ohio River soon. The Mill Creek meanders through Cincinnati until Fred finds himself passing under a bridge. We have a lot of bridges here in Cincinnati where people drive over to get to work or school. Can you name some ways people get to those places? Cars, trucks, school buses, bicycles, and even trains. And all of these vehicles need certain things to operate. One of them is the gas that you put into your family's car about once or twice a week. But every few months or so, you have to go to the mechanic to get something else put in. It's called motor oil. Oil helps a vehicle's parts move smoothly, but cars leak oil, and when it gets into nature, it can be harmful. The bridge Fred passes under is a busy bridge, and every vehicle leaves a drop or two of oil as it goes over. This can really add up. This day's rain is washing all of that oil off of the bridge and into the Mill Creek. Oh no, poor Fred! Oil is not healthy for animals to eat, and it's very thick and sticky. This is dangerous for Fred and other animals in the Mill Creek. Fred finds himself covered in oil. It covers his eyes and clogs his gills, making it hard to see or breathe. Fred swims away as fast as he can to avoid getting any more oil on him. Farther down the creek, a road runs alongside it. It has lots of cars with oil too, but this time Fred faces a new problem. The night before, the weather person came on the TV and said that it was going to snow a lot. And when cities are expecting snow, they send out large trucks to spray something all over the roads. Can you guess what it's called? Salt. Road salt is cool because when you put it on roads or sidewalks, it helps the snow and ice melt, making it safer for people to drive on. But this salt is not like the salt you put on your food, which comes from nature. Road salt is actually made of different types of chemicals that are good for melting snow, but would be dangerous for anyone, humans or animals, to eat. But remember, it's raining today. Often the weatherman or woman can get the weather report wrong. It's a hard job. So all that salt the city put on the roads the night before is washing with the rain into the Mill Creek. Oh no, poor Fred! Fred feels sick, the water tastes gross, and he knows that he needs to get out of here. Weak, Fred swims off. 
Fred passes more and more roads on his way down the Mill Creek. He goes under more bridges and finds himself in an area with lots of big factories. You've probably seen factories, right? They often have tall smokestacks with lots of people and trucks going in and out. Still the curious fish he is, Fred peeks out of the water to investigate two humans along the creek bank. They have a big barrel full of mysterious liquid that came from the factory. Almost everything we use comes from some kind of factory, and when your clothes or toys or tablets are made, there's often a lot of bad stuff left over. Sometimes these leftovers are very bad, so bad it can hurt your skin or eyes and make you sick. For that we call it toxic waste. We can't just throw toxic waste away with normal trash. It can be expensive to safely dispose of. Some factories choose not to be safe and find it easier to not follow the rules, dumping toxic waste into creeks and rivers. Today, that's exactly what Fred sees happening with those two humans along the creek. He sees the toxic waste being secretly poured into the Mill Creek. Oh no, poor Fred! This is especially scary because that waste can be anything and can cause a lot of harm to animals, plants, and especially people. Fred is scared and makes a swim for it. He swims with all his might, trying to get away from all the things that make him tired and sick and sad behind him. Fred feels depressed. The Mill Creek is his home, but it wasn't a safe place to live because people were purposefully and accidentally harming the planet. But just as Fred is about to lose all hope, the Mill Creek opens up and around him was big open water, giant bridges, tall buildings, and the Reds and Bengals stadiums. Fred had finally reached the Ohio River. Fred's story is similar to the lives of countless fish, amphibians, birds, and mammals that call the Mill Creek home. And just because Fred made it to the Ohio River doesn't mean it will be easy now. When we pollute areas around creeks, those harmful substances flow from the creek into rivers like the Ohio, which are then also polluted. Eventually, all those sick rivers make it to the ocean, where things like the litter from your neighborhood can harm sea creatures too. But it isn't all doom and gloom. We know about the problems, and that means we can find solutions as a community and as individuals. Think of the things you can do to help creatures like Fred. How can you make a difference and help Cincinnati and the world be a clean, safe place to live? Let's talk about some of those ideas. Litter. Not littering is a powerful way to help your neighborhood. If you can't find a trash can, hold on to your trash until you get home. Even better, when it's safe to do so, you can pick up litter around your school or neighborhood. Your class or your family can work together, see who can pick up the most trash, or even volunteer to clean up places like the Mill Creek. This makes the places we live more beautiful, and you'll feel good knowing you kept the people and critters in your neighborhood safe. Plant trees. We learned about how taking away trees leads to erosion when the soil is washed away by rain. Consider planting trees. Being around green spaces actually makes people happier too. And not only do trees help clean the water, but they also help clean the air. Help your parents around the house. A lot of what we learned you can pass on to your grown-ups at home. Tell your family to hold off putting fertilizer on the lawn or salt on the driveway when you know it's going to rain. Or, if you notice that your adult's car is leaking oil, you'll know because it looks like a rainbow on the ground, let them know so that they can get it fixed. Many grown-ups don't realize that some of these things can be harmful, but now you do, and you can be a teacher at home. Consider the sewer. Did you know that Cincinnati has the oldest sewer system in the country? Well, that's neat trivia, but what does that have to do with Fred? Well, because the sewer is so old, it doesn't work very well, and when it rains, the sewer easily floods. That's pretty icky, considering what goes into the sewer, down your sink drain, and down your toilet. But the flooding also washes all the bad stuff we put down the drain into the river before it has a chance to be cleaned. 
Tell your grown-up not to put dangerous things like chemicals from the garage or basement down the sink drain. Also, many things we think are okay to put down the drain aren't. Don't put your little brother's dirty diapers or flushable wipes, grease, or oil from cooking down the toilet or sink drain. Also, when it's raining, try not to run the dishwasher, wash clothes, or if you can, take a shower. If everyone in the city washes more water down into the sewer when it's already raining, it will cause it to flood more. That's just a little tip you can use at home and tell your family about. Okay, boys and girls, let's get Fred cleaned up. To learn more, check out our resource guides where you can discover books and games that teach you more about how to keep our waters clean. You can also find out how your family or class can volunteer for Mill Creek cleanup events. Fun fact, we use things from around the kitchen in our story today, so our toy Fred is safe and it makes cleaning up easier. No washing harmful stuff down the drain. See you next time! These videos were made possible through the generosity of our donors. Special shout outs to Charles H. Dater Foundation, the City of Cincinnati, the Ohio's Arts Council, the General Electric Community Service Fund, the Kroger Foundation, Duke Energy. To learn more about Keep Cincinnati Beautiful and all of our programming across the city, visit our website, www.keepcincinnatibeautiful.org. Learn how you can get involved, volunteer, and make this city beautiful by signing up for our newsletter or following us on social media. As a nonprofit, we thrive through the support of our sponsors and individual donors like you. If you would like to contribute to Keep Cincinnati Beautiful, click the donate link in the video description box below.